The following program is paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. Welcome to today's program. You may have heard me say that part of enjoying our lives is learning how to get our minds off ourselves and begin thinking about others. Well, today I want to introduce you to a few special people who can help you do that. Take a look at this. Nestled within the crevices of the more renowned areas of Palm Beach, Florida, is a facility that's easy to miss. Yet its patrons consist of distinguished individuals you'll never forget. They come here to socialize, create artistic masterpieces, and mount the various steeds located on the property. Places like this are rare because the elite members of this prestigious group cannot build places like this for themselves. If, if we are able to bring down the walls of fear and misunderstanding about disabilities, then I think that a lot more churches would be able to love on people with disabilities. Alicia Zuka helped start this ministry for this distinguished group more than a decade ago here at Christ Fellowship Church. She says many churches don't go the extra mile to minister to people living with disabilities. Having ramps and having wide doors uh, is the first step, but a ramp doesn't have a heart. People with disabilities are isolated, are misunderstood, and are often ignored. Because we can see the limitations of a person with special needs, that's often where we focus our attention, overlooking their emotional and spiritual needs. Alicia says to help them connect to the church, connect to the community, and in many cases, connect to Jesus, we must do more. We as a church, like Luke 14 says, need to be proactive. A person with a disability could be shut in, and so we need to be proactive. For years, Christ Fellowship Church has made reaching out to individuals with special needs and their families a priority. More recently, Joyce Meyer Ministry Partners have joined the effort to reach this often forgotten community by providing an exciting new addition to their program, the Hand of Hope Center. Alicia says the center offers training for volunteers to meet the needs of people living with disabilities. The building will help expand Christ Fellowship services beyond previous limitations. Some of the volunteers and parents of children with special needs met with us to talk about what it means to them. It's made such a change. When we first started here, it was Lori was going through a time of um, Oh, she doesn't want me to talk about this. No, 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 no. She has grown yes. so much. And then there's the fellowship, like when she did have the time out when she had surgery and knowing that prayers were being said for her. I mean, it's just that fellowship and family and support that just really just means so much. And we really, I don't even know how to say thank you because it's just really been such thank a you. blessing. You know, once you've been coming for a few years and you see the kids grow and come out of their shells and talk and... And, and the joy and then the, the, the change you see when they get on a horse and the way the horses respond to the kids, it's just, it's a, we go home exhausted and we're like, I can't wait till next week. Yeah. Yeah. How old was David when? Three. Three. And he's 14. Last week we did a, a brief tour through the uh, Hand of Hope Center with Alicia just to get an idea of what it looked like inside. And um, it was really overwhelming to see all the planning and all the extra facilities that it had. When you're out in the community, you feel like you're being judged and looked at. You know, and you've got a child that maybe has a strange behavior. You know, you can come to special needs and you feel relaxed because everybody understands. We're so thankful and for what's happened so far, but to think what, what the future brings is going to be amazing. The special needs ministry operated out of this small home for years. The ministry grew, but the building didn't. This is where Joyce Meyer Ministry Partners come in. First of all, you may have to pray for me because I'm having a little bit of a hard time not coveting that door. <laughs> I was thinking yesterday about 
partnership and I don't know if people really, really understand the power of partnership. It's like God puts something in each of us, but he doesn't put everything in any of us. And he did it purposely so we would have to need each other and work together. And one of the biggest problems that Christians have today is so many of them do nothing. We're blessed in the doing. When Jesus washed the disciples' feet in John 13, he gave them the example. And then in verse 17, he said, blessed are you knowing these things if you do them. And, you know, the world is not really all that impressed by what we say. Matter of fact, if you say something and don't do it, that's when they yell, hypocrite, hypocrite. So we could do even less talking and more living and and affect a lot more people. And so it's our honor to be part of this. It's good and right to thank a lot of people. I've been thanked. I'm thanking you, thanking you. Pastor Tom's thanking you. But we all know that bottom line is we're nothing without God. And we would have no gifts and no money and no ability or, or, or anything if it wasn't for him. So let's just, let's give God the glory. Amen. Here we go. Here we go, guys. Ready? One, two, three. For Alicia, today's ceremony was a culmination of watching God provide for the special needs ministry. She knows firsthand how valuable it is to have a place where you're accepted. She didn't have a place like this when her girls were born. I have um, a sensory disability. My body senses are a bit heightened than what usual people are, such as sight, sound, hearing, but also emotions. Emotions, that's heightened up as well, and... It's difficult sometimes to hold in tears when you're not supposed to cry. People with special needs are are very isolated. They feel like they're broken, but and they're hurting on inside. Each church would either say, you know, that this was a punishment for us, or that they could not serve us because they did not have the tools or the rooms or the staff available to help us. And so we started to feel like we were lepers. Cynthia and Elizabeth know who they are in Christ because they grew up in an environment focused on showing them God's love through their struggles. God said, hey, I made you. You are not oops and I make everything perfect. You are a tool for me, so I be using you. I don't know why I have these type of disabilities, um, but I know that God has a plan for each and every single little piece that is in my body. What the Hand of Hope Center is going to enable us to do is to serve the community, to serve our community with disabilities so that they will have an oasis, find fellowship, find community, have a place to connect, and learn about the love of Jesus through helping hands. The new Hand of Hope building is located next door to the old one, leaving the horse therapy intact while increasing the opportunities to reach out in a greater capacity. When I walked into the kitchen, I was like, wow, three ovens. I don't know how we're going to operate. It's going to be so exciting to have that fully functioning kitchen. And the food fellowship is such a huge part of our Saturday mornings for me. Um, And the fact that there are two or three hundred people will sit down and and fellowship and the families of our special needs families are accepted in that dining. And so many times they go out to eat and they're not. They can go to the sensory room and they can, it's quiet and they can calmly, you know, they can relax. They have the therapy bed if somebody needs to get out of their wheelchair and stretch out. So amazing that we can, we'll be able to do that. Yeah. We also will be doing training in, in the center for all of what we call our shadowers. People who are trained to know how to properly take care of a child of unique special needs and knowing how to relate to the child, connect with the child, provide the proper care for the child right. and supervision of the child. Then these showers build a relationship with the children 
So the child has the same child work all the time. Yeah, that's good. It is a tremendous relief when a parent can come to church and actually put their child into the care of a trained person. I love that idea. That will mm -hmm. take care of their child so they can worship. Yeah. Our, our most dedicated uh, group is a, the, our volunteers yeah. that work. We have about 300 volunteers that are active, ongoing here. And it's going to increase now because of the new center we have that actually allows us and affords us to be able to use this throughout the week for training mm -hmm. for our mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then we've got, there's special counseling that many of the children need as well. And we have counselors and therapists that will work one-on-one -on -one yeah. with the children. And some of them are also in group settings. So That's we're, right. we're excited about that. Father God, we come in Jesus' name. And because of what he did, we can come to you boldly in prayer. Yeah. And first, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for letting us help. Thank you for the privilege of having a gift or a talent or some finances that we can put together to reach out and help hurting people. Father, we know that you love every person on this planet equally, but I do believe that you have a very special place in your heart for children, and I'm sure that the needier they are, the more your heart goes out to them. And so we thank you for this opportunity and we dedicate this building, this property for your use. Yes. Yeah. Nothing that we say is ours is really ours, but really we're stewards, not owners. Yes. And we pray that you will help us always to manage what you put in our hands well and for your glory. So this is your house, God. We pray that Many, many multiplied thousands of needy people will be encouraged, made to feel valuable, that they would find healing and restoration and the help and encouragement that they need, and that they would then become a blessing to many themselves, bringing help to them. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. As we end isolation in the life of someone with a disability, we share with them the gospel of Jesus. We introduce them to a community that they can belong to, that they can have support from, that they can grow, that can, then they, they can find what their purpose is, even through all of their challenges, and that then they can give back to the Lord and carry out their mission, their God-given mission in their life, and then reach out to someone else. Did you know that your special gift today can help teach people about Christ? We were just listening to a wonderful Bible story and you are making it happen. You can help with medical care, feeding, and a roof over young people's heads that will totally change their lives. So give us a call right now or go to the website. Your gift makes a difference. Join us today. When you give a special gift to Joyce Meyer Ministries towards our missions outreach, Hand of Hope, you're doing more than just providing physical needs. You're spreading the love of Christ across the U.S. and to the most remote parts of the world. For your donation today of any amount, we'd like to send you Joyce's four-part teaching series, The Gift of Everyday Joy, plus a pack of inspirational cards for you to share with those you love. Contact us now, 1-800-727-9673, or go to JoyceMeyer.org. You know, abuse is a far too common occurrence in every race, culture, and nationality around the world. Unfortunately, there are many places that don't have facilities where victims can heal. But I'm delighted to say that we have helped build a home for girls suffering from emotional disorders stemming from abuse in Lima, Peru. Does this sound like you? Every time I look myself in the mirror, I would see a deformed image or someone you know. I live my life imagining how, how could I die. Has this happened to you? When I was six years old, I was abused from a woman from my family. 
or someone you love. I grew up in a, in a home where like my parents were absent and when I was 12, I met this boy, he did drugs. Then I got pregnant. What is it about a home that forms the people in it? The women of Grace House are discovering the answer to that question and finding a future despite their past. I grew up in a Christian home, you know, like God is love and God is so powerful and God is so able. And I was like, why if you are all of this stuff? Why aren't you helping me? Why you couldn't like stop me being abused or my parents got into a divorce and just left us, you know? So I was mad at that. I was really mad, like, I, I couldn't see how God could be, like, that mean to me if he was, like, so able to do stuff. I cut myself and I was addicted to porn and to pills. And I think that eating disorders were the thing that just followed it. But I had a really strong emotional problem that in the long run, it ended up in a, an addiction to the casinos and gambling. When I tried to commit suicide, I just took a lot of pills. And the weird thing was that I only woke up with a really bad stomach cramp. Why didn't it work? That's what I thought. I came here like giving God one last chance to do something for me. Um, to be honest, I, I really like didn't think I was gonna be able to make it. I was just like, I'm gonna try. And I'm gonna put like, I'm gonna give everything of me and I hope that you do something. Because if you don't, I don't know what, I'm, what am I gonna do. I didn't come in thinking it would work. I, would, I just came in thinking nothing else works, so maybe this will work. Joyce Meyer Ministries partners helped build this beautiful home. But it takes more than a safe structure to heal an individual's heart. Within the walls of Grace House, these young women experience the presence and love of Christ and receive biblical resources to recognize their value in Him. The first time I actually wanted to live, it was here. Um, I was in my room. It was night, and I was like, Suddenly, I just felt like living was worth it. And um, I just could feel God telling me, I love you really much, like a lot, and he ha like hugging me. And, um, and that was, I think that was one of the break points for me here. Grace House is the only one of its kind in Peru, designed to help young women heal from emotional pains, addictions, self-harm, and abuse. The first girl that walked through the doors, when she walked in, she said, I didn't know God loved me this much. And all of a sudden we said, it's worth it. It's worth it. It took longer than we thought, cost more than we thought, but she was worth it. Not only did Joyce Meyer Ministry Partners help fund the construction of this facility, many of Joyce's teachings are primary recovery resources used by the women. Joyce has a connection with the young girls. It doesn't matter which language or culture it's translated into, she connects. Pastor Robert Berenger moved his family to Peru more than 30 years ago to spread the gospel and meet the practical needs of the culture. His daughter, Jenna, inspired the creation of Grace House. I wanted my past to be another person's miracle. When I was very young, I was emotionally and physically abused by leaders in our church. When I turned 13, I started an, anore an eating disorder with anorexia and bulimia, and then it became self-mutilation. It felt like the hole was just getting deeper and deeper, and I just it was getting harder and harder to get out, and it was getting darker and darker to the point where there was already no hope. and. I just didn't know how to get out. I thought that that was just life. Jenna grew up in a loving Christian environment, but the abuse she suffered outside the home sent her spiraling down a path of destruction. I loved God. I loved everybody He created. I just thought it was 
me that was wrong. Oh, I hated myself 100%. I couldn't stand looking at myself. I didn't understand why God created me. And I didn't like this world. I just didn't want to live in it. Doctors would say that the only way I would be happy was living off seven pills a day. And that I would never really experience healing, that I would always struggle with this. Jenna left Peru and went to Mercy Ministries, another outreach supported by Joyce Meyer Ministries. I went in and said, okay, God, I will give everything to you if you can show me that I don't have to live like this ever again. Before I always said, I smile and nobody realizes it's a fake smile. And I always thought that it would always be a fake smile and that everybody had a fake smile. But what I realized inside the program was through God's love and through healing that He was showing me every day how much He loved me, that little by little my smile became real and that I could really live a happy life. Not because of me or because of people around me, but because of Him, that His love is the answer, not the problem. She returned to Peru and discovered the great need for homes like this one. Peru is a place where there's a lot of abuse, a lot of emotional, sexual, and physical abuse in families. 64% of all Peruvian children are sexually abused. One in every three girls will be raped before she's 15. So we've seen stories where uh, the father is an alcoholic, he'll come home, want to have sex with mom. She says, I'm too tired, go to your daughter, and he does. So Grace House was born out of the great need of a place to heal. Sometimes a home outside of the place we grew up in is what we need to experience Christ's love. Joyce Meyer Ministry Partners are part of what's providing that experience to women in Peru and in many other Christian recovery homes around the world. I think the enemy works with us two ways. The first thing he'll tell you is don't do anything, it's too big, you're not worthy, you can't do anything. The second thing is do too much and he'll try to get you to burn out. So as a missionary, we see so much need that we just have to pray, which part of that can I help? Um, and once we begin to help, do what we can. I think that's my biggest prayer in life, that we as Christians would do what Proverbs 31 says, to be a voice for those who have no voice. And most of these girls have no voice. And they need somebody just to say, I, can, I believe in you. Every time I see a girl walk in through those doors, or a girl graduate, or even a small victory in their life. To me, it's the greatest day. Many people told me I couldn't change, but when they saw that I was in this house, they saw that every weekend that I came out of this house, I was different. Even knowing that they're not Christians, they can see that God is real through me, and they can realize that for God, there's nothing impossible and nervous for what's to come. But I'm really excited to see what's ahead because I know that good things are there. I'm not scared of being myself. I'm not scared of loving or being loved. I want to live every day and maximize every day. I probably would be dead if it wouldn't be for this place. So I'm beyond words thankful for everything here. I never thought that I could be actually happy. So. It's, it's amazing. I mean, life's amazing now, <laughs> so I'm happy. Well, we have the honor of providing a hand of hope to individuals around the world. So when you give to this ministry, you're reaching out to people with special needs in Florida and simultaneously helping girls overcome the scars of abuse in Lima, Peru. You're feeding children right here in America, Africa, and Europe. You're sending the gospel to two-thirds of the world through television and reaching countless others through books and the internet. You're changing lives. Thank you so much for helping us. Please prayerfully consider sending in a special gift toward our outreaches. 
I promise you that it will not be in vain. Lives are changing because of people like you. Well, today we're offering my four-part CD series called The Gift of Everyday Joy. You know, joy is so important. It's our strength. It's something God intended us to do. Not only does He want you to have joy, He wants you to enjoy your life. And this series is intended to help you understand that that's what God wants for you. He wants you to live in His joy every day. And in order to help you spread God's joy to other people, we are including some encouragement note cards that you can use to be a blessing to others. And this CD series and note cards are being offered today for a gift of any amount to the ministry to help support our missions efforts. You can help spread the love of God to people and bring the message of Christ to millions of people around the world. and At the same time, be blessed with some word that's going to really help you enjoy the life that you have. So help us help other people and let us help you with this word. And remember, through Christ, we have hope. You know, Los Angeles is a place where just literally hundreds of thousands of young women come into hoping for fame and fortune, but many of them are tricked into sex trafficking. And I'm so grateful that through our partnership with the Los Angeles Dream Center here, that we are getting to be involved in restoring those girls' lives through using the Word of God to show them the lies that they've been fed and how the truth can set them free. And I'm asking you today if you will send just your very best financial gift to help us continue to reach out to hurting people like this. Thank you and God bless you. When you give a special gift to Joyce Meyer Ministries towards our missions outreach, Hand of Hope, you're doing more than just providing physical needs. You're spreading the love of Christ across the U.S. and to the most remote parts of the world. For your donation today of any amount, we'd like to send you Joyce's four-part teaching series, The Gift of Everyday Joy, plus a pack of inspirational cards for you to share with those you love. Contact us now, 1-800-727-9673, or go to JoyceMeyer.org. You know, it's really amazing how many people are living in a constant state of overload. Do you say things like, I can't do this much longer? Well, it may be the way of our culture, but that doesn't mean you have to live that way. In my new book, Overload, I'll show you that you don't have to live every day stressed out and overwhelmed. Remember, God doesn't always want to change everything around you. He wants to change you. Get your copy of my book, Overload, today.